In the 1700s, England looked a lot different than it does today. Most people lived in villages of about 200 to 400 people. They worked from sunrise to sunset in their homes, workshops, or nearby fields, just like their ancestors had for hundreds of years. Men and boys would farm and tend livestock, while women and girls would preserve food, make products for the home, and to sell and take care of the home. Their homes were small, with dirt floors and fireplaces where they burned firewood or coal. Nearly everyone slept in the same room. Families were the main social unit and ate meals together. On average, people only lived to be 40, and 50% of children died before they were 21 years old. In terms of wealth, most people were poor farmers. There were a few people in the middle class, and even less people were aristocrats or nobility. Each village had a commons area that anyone could use for grazing, hunting, getting firewood, growing crops, etc. That area wasn't fenced off because it was held in common for everyone. Poor farmers who didn't own their own land could use the commons to get by. Between villages, travel was across dirt roads, and this made it difficult and slow. Because of this, most people made almost everything they needed at home, like food, clothes, furniture, and tools. Does that sound like what you know about England today? Probably not. That's because over the next 100 years, the Industrial Revolution completely changed the way of life in these English villages. We're going to go through and learn about the changes that happened. To begin, you'll need to create your own village. To do that, you're going to need a copy of the urban game Google Duck. Most villages were established by rivers because they needed a water source, so start by drawing a river. You'll need to click on this tool and click where it says scribble. Draw a line from one side of your duck to the opposite side. Change the color to blue, then change the width to 24 point. Find the fish image on the side. Copy and paste three or more fish in your river. Find the wooden bridge image. Pick a place where you want your bridge to cross the river. Click the scribble tool again. From one side of the bridge, draw a road leading wherever you want. Change the color to brown and the thickness to 12 point. Make a second road. Have them go different directions. Repeat this on the other side of the bridge. You should now have four roads that are connected by the bridge. Find the house image. Copy and paste 10 houses wherever you want them to go. Find the church image. Copy and paste one church wherever you want. Repeat the process for the rest in this list. One cemetery, one store, one pub, one restaurant, one coal mine. Now we're going to add some trees. Copy and paste the tree image 10 times nearby each other like I do. Select all of them by holding shift and clicking on each one. Then hit copy, now hit paste. Move that set of trees to a new area. Repeat three more times so you have at least 50 trees. If any trees are covering up buildings or you don't like where they are, you can move them. Finally, find an area that's mostly trees and copy and paste the commons label there. Now your village is all set up for how one in 1700 would have been. Let's see what changes in your village as the years pass and the Industrial Revolution happens. The year is 1745. You are a young capitalist who decides to invest your money in a canal to help transport things. All of England is within 90 miles of the sea and there are many navigable rivers, so a canal seems like a wise choice. Remember, the government isn't providing funding for this canal, you are. Use the line tool to draw a canal. It needs to start at the river and direct water to your coal mine. Change the color to a different blue and thickness 12 point. People find it easier to transport items on your canal instead of the bad roads, and it costs them half the price to move coal from the mines to the towns on the canal versus the road. You make a 300% profit. Since you made a profit, build yourself one nice home anywhere you want. Copy and paste the nice home image onto your village. It's now 1750. Your village has started putting sewage in the canal so that it flows away. Increased use of soap, better diets, and this new waste management result in less people dying from illnesses like the bubonic plague. As a result, there's a population explosion. Add five houses. By 1760, this increase of people in your village means that more food and goods are needed. Inventions like the seed drill, horse-drawn cultivator, 
and more productive farming practices like crop rotation, fertilizers, and breeding techniques allow farmers to increase their output if they have enough land. Most farmers only have a small amount of land, and as more people need farms, there isn't enough land for everyone. Parliament responds by passing a series of laws called the Enclosure Acts. People could now buy pieces of the commons from the government. Copy and paste the oval to fence in the remainder of the commons. Add five houses and one nice house to your village. In 1773, the water frame was invented. This invention can spin and weave cloth a hundred times faster than could be done by hand at home, and makes cloth cheaper to buy. Water is the main source of power for the machine, and it is kept in a building called a factory. Add one factory next to the river because it is powered by water. Since it runs on water, there is no smoke. The canal water is not fast enough to generate the power needed by the machine. One year later, in 1774, the factory needs more workers. Home weavers can't compete with factory cloth prices, and poor families aren't able to survive with the loss of the commons in the enclosure acts. These people move to your town to find work and become factory workers. These people also need to buy factory-made items because they don't have time to make them from hand at home anymore. Add 15 houses, one church, one pub, one store. Draw two additional roads and one additional bridge if you think they're needed. The first textile or cloth factory makes a lot of money. Many other capitalists build their own factories hoping to make a large profit. The owners are called capitalists because they have the capital or money to purchase the raw materials, the building, the water frame, and to pay their workers. Add five new factories. Remember, they must be on the riverbank as they need water power and they don't have any smoke. Add five houses. It's now 1780. Unemployment is high in the countryside and starving families are coming into your community looking for jobs, even though wages are very low. All these people need a place to stay, so housing is in high demand. To solve this, a new building called a tenement is created. In tenements, dozens of families live in one building. These people also need to eat, drink, and shop. Add five tenements. One store, one pub. By 1782, the average worker begins at 6 o'clock a.m. and ends at 9 o'clock p.m. with only a 30-minute break for lunch. They do this six days a week. Their only day off is Sunday. They are paid low wages and most cannot save and some go into debt. After work, exhausted workers stop at their local pub to relax. Alcohol consumption rates skyrocket. Add five pubs. Add one church. The workers are tired, so make it close by. Delete five houses and replace them with four tenements. It's 1783 and though the workers are barely surviving, the large landowning farmers and factory owners' lifestyle is pretty comfortable. They're not nobles or aristocrats, but they can enjoy some of the upper class way of life. They are called the new rich. They build beautiful homes, have better food, employ servants, can afford their children's education, and wear fine clothing. Add two nice homes, one factory, 15 houses, one school for the families wealthy enough to send their children, really boys, to school. You may need to start cutting down trees to make room for these things. By 1785, another machine has been invented. This one runs on coal and is called a steam engine. Capitalists quickly replace water frames with steam engines because the coal makes it run better, it's far more efficient, and factories can be built away from the river because they aren't water powered anymore. Coal is more mobile and England has lots of it. Add 10 factories with smoke. Replace the other factories with factories with smoke. One nice house, five houses, one tenement. By 1800, something called the puddling process changes your town further. In this process, coal becomes a primary fuel in the new iron industry. Large factory districts manufacture iron at low prices, and your canal easily transports the iron. Add one new coal mine. Replace the wooden bridge with a new iron bridge. Five houses. It's 1815 and coal miners are busy mining coal. There's a great demand for coal right now. People need coal to heat their homes, to fuel the steam engines, and to make iron. While in the 1700s, miners were generally men who worked in the winter for extra pay, 
By the 1800s, miners were typically children eight and up. Mining coal is dangerous and unhealthy. Children are victims of black lung, explosions, and accidents. They have to stoop over for 14 hours a day to mine coal, which stunts their growth. They're malnourished and unable to exercise or eat properly. Casualty rates go up. Add one coal mine. Connect the coal mine to the river with one canal. One cemetery. By 1820, there's too much traffic for the canals and dirt roads to handle. People wonder, can the steam engine be used for transportation? A steam engine is designed so it can pull a series of wagons or cars on an iron track. The first railroad is tested and is a success. Add one major railroad line connecting all your factories to your coal mines. This is one continuous track which must connect all your factories and mines. You can add railroad bridges only if you need to. Use the scribble tool to draw it. Make the color gray and change the type of line to dashed. Add five houses for railroad builders. It's now 1827 and the railroad has brought thousands of people to your community. Now there is a surplus of workers. Capitalists decide to hire women and children instead of men because they can pay them less to do the same job. Usually they were paid 50 to 75% less than men's wages. More children leave their homes to work. Working conditions in the factories are extremely bad. Many workers get fevers or lung disease and are injured on the job in factory accidents. Children, weak from lack of sleep, the long hours, or poor diets stumble into machinery and are mutilated. Women with long hair sometimes get caught in moving machinery. There are no safety rules or railings. If you're unable to work, you're fired. There's no health insurance, and there's always a line of unemployed workers waiting to fill jobs. Many men become depressed ashamed and angry about their wives and children working in factories or in their own unemployment. So they turn to crime and the social life of the pub. Alcoholism becomes a major issue and family members seldom eat together or see each other. Add one jail, two pubs, two tenements, two cemeteries, two hospitals. It's 1838 and other industries like furniture, ammunition, paper, and shoes have also become mechanized. People begin to discover that byproducts of one process can be used for something else. For example, the gases released from coal could be burned to give light. Your village starts to pipe in gas to burn in street lamps. Soon, all around England, hundreds of towns use gas to light streets and homes. Add 20 street lamps along the streets. In 1840, the demand for more railroads is very high. Products need to be moved all across England. In the late 1840s, Ireland has been dealing with a devastating potato famine. Hundreds of thousands of Irish immigrated to England rather than starve to death. These Irish immigrants became the cheapest labor to build more railroads. Add one more railroad line. Four railroad stations along the railroad. Five houses. One tenement for the new railroad workers. Earlier, the aristocrats were the only ones who could afford cultural activities. However, it's 1842 and the small amount of middle class people in your town can now afford to attend museums, theater, opera, restaurants, plays, and concerts. Add one museum slash theater, two private schools, one restaurant, one nice house. By 1845, the industries of your city have taken their toll. There are no environmental restrictions and your city looks dark with all the pollution. Everything, even trees, are covered with layers of soot. The river can't be used for drinking, bathing, or laundry. A new disease called cancer begins to take the lives of people. The average life expectancy for the poor is now 30 years of age. Your city is overcrowded and constantly covered in factory smoke. Suicide rates double, then triple. Draw X's over your fish's eyes. Add one cemetery, one jail, one hospital. It's 1850 and by now several million acres of good English common land have been sold. For the poor who used to depend on the commons, this is terrible, but it benefits the large farmers. They buy commons land and the newest machines and can easily feed the working class. The small farmer is crushed without the commons. 
They cannot afford the machines and therefore cannot compete and grow food profitably. Thousands leave their villages and move to towns and cities looking for work in the factories. Delete the commons area. You may now put whatever you want there. Add 20 houses, five tenements, two stores, one church, five factories, one pub, three nice houses. 